Hi there and welcome back to the channel. In this episode I'm going to be working on a sunrise photo from my next road trip video. I'm going to be working with four different versions of the image. This one here that's highlighted uh, is taken at f22 to get that sunburst effect. The more you stop a lens down shooting towards the sun the more pronounced that effect is. The disadvantages to taking an image at f22 is first of all that the image isn't quite as sharp, you get diffraction when you stop down to very small apertures. Uh, but also it means that the shutter speeds get quite long. And it was quite a breezy morning so the, there would have been movement in the flowers in the foreground and I wanted to try and minimise that. The other three images were taken at f13 at a shutter speed of a 50th of a second to try and keep the flowers as sharp as possible. Uh, and I've taken three exposures, one where I've focused on the foreground, one where I focused on the middle ground and the third one where I focused on the background. And we'll try and combine those three together to get the sharpness all the way through the image. Initially though, I'm going to start off with this image here, the, the foreground one. And uh, I will do some global adjustments first of all. So I'm going to start off by changing the colour profile to Adobe Landscape. And I'm going to change the white balance. We'll bring that up to around about six and a half thousand just to warm up the image globally and maybe a little bit more of a tint as well just to get, bring out those kind of purpley magenta colors and then into exposure I'm going to take it up maybe around about there I'll take the contrast up a little as well I'm going to bring the highlights down I want to try and bring back some of the detail in the cloud and the sky. I take the shadows up by around 40 or so maybe to 35 to open up the, the darker areas. Uh, bring up the whites a little and pull the blacks down again. Okay and then a little bit of vibrance and saturation. And these all, all these global adjustments, I can always come back in at a later stage to try and fine tune them. But this is just to get the image to a, a basic starting point. And uh, OK, so from there, I think we might start moving on towards local adjustments. We'll start off with a linear gradient over the sky area. Just rather than taking a, a sky selection, I think I might just do it this way. Take the temperature down a little bit and we might bring the highlights down a little bit as well. Sometimes doing it with a sky selection it's it's a very abrupt cut off and you can get a kind of a halo effect so this gives you a, a more feathered transition between the area of the adjustment and the area that's not adjusted. Now there are a few areas in the sky that need a bit of attention. There's this bright patch up here which really grabs your eye, drags your attention away from the rest of the image and there are a few dust spots as well so if I go in at 100% and drag the box here up to the top left we'll work on the bit of cloud there first of all and if I hit Q on the keyboard this opens the healing panel um, there's a clone brush, there's a healing brush and there's content aware fill or content aware uh, re removal tool I suppose you'd call it and that's the one I'm going to use for this and I'm going to just adjust the size of my cursor with the square bracket tool I don't mind the green circle that's just to help you see where I'm working it's the outer circle that is the one that's going to affect the image so I'm going to drag this across that bright area there and that is taking it out Okay, now let's see, we've got a dust spot here, so I take that out there, and if I drag across, there's one or two others here as well, I'm going to make the brush a little smaller for these ones, there, there, and there. Okay, now let's go back out to fit the image on screen. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is some more local adjustments. 
And what I want to try and do is emphasize the highlights on the areas where the sun is just skimming across the top of the flowers. So to do this, I'm going to use a brush mask. And I'm going to maybe bring the highlights up a little, take the shadows down, take the exposure up maybe a little as well. And then clicking on the color box here that currently has an X through it, I'm going to pick a yellowish orange shade my brush size is 8.5, that's about right. It's feathered, I'll bring it that up. Maybe it's 74, 75. And flow and density are 100. <laughs> and now I'm just going to brush in on the areas that I want to lighten. And if this gets like it's too much, I can always dial back the settings. I just want to just bring out these areas So your eye is led through the image. Go back up here, maybe a little bit more as well. And just some of the areas where the sun was shining through. Bring it right the way across, so you just get the feeling of the sunbeam. I might just go a little bit into this area over here as well. Don't want to be, make a distraction, but just enough to carry your eye from the bottom area up into the top. Okay, so, uh, let's see, I think that's probably much as far as we need to go here with this. Now, in the library, I'm going to sync those changes to the other images. So, I'll just command click them, or control click them, and hit sync settings and I check all, including the masks, and synchronize. Okay, so now they're all synced together. Next thing is to right click and go to edit in. And down the bottom of this tab, we'll have open as layers in Photoshop. And we'll just wait for them to open. Okay, so we have all four images as separate layers now in Photoshop. And I'm going to select them all. I'm going to go to Edit, Auto Align Layers, click select the default and click OK. And Photoshop will make sure that they're all perfectly lined up. My tripod was spiked into the ground, but the, it was still moving quite a bit because it was a very, very soft ground, so there may be a bit of movement. In fact, you can see that there was. You can see a little bit of a white line around the edges where the, the images didn't line up exactly right. Now I'm going to turn off the top layer, the, using the eyeball, turn off the, vi the visibility of that, and I'm going to just select the bottom three layers. The top layer I only want for that starburst effect. So with these three layers selected, I'm now going to go to Edit and Auto Blend Layers. Again, select the default, which is Stack Images, and Photoshop will then create masked versions of each of the layers and combine them all into one single layer. And now with the top layer selected, I'm going to option click or alt click on the mask icon, which creates a black mask on that layer. And that effectively completely hides that layer. It means that it's invisible. You're only seeing what's below it. And what I want to do is just paint in the area of the starburst, of the sunburst. And I'll do that using a white brush. So my brush tool selected, white is my foreground color. And when I paint on, so this reveals the sun's rays as I paint out from the sun. So if I click that eyeball on and off, you can see we could just get the more pronounced layers. And if I want to blend it a little more, I can just dial back the opacity a little bit so that we get the effect of the glow and the, the, the starburst. Okay, and let's just go to close that. So we'll go File, Close. Let's save it. It's saving it with the layers. If you flatten the image, the file size will be smaller. 
And then we will end up back in Photoshop. Sorry, back in Lightroom. And there we have pretty much a finished image. I might just click the calibration tab here, bring up this blue saturation, which really makes those flowers pop. And uh, I think we're done with this image. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. There'll be lots more content like this. And until the next time, goodbye.